So, in the liturgy of St. Basil, the Church tries to remind you and me the intention of God's heart when He created us, and how it is that originally His plan and His purpose for us was that we remain in a state of incorruption. Why is this so important? Because when we read in the liturgy of St. Basil, in the prayer of reconciliation, O God, the great, the eternal, who formed man in incorruption, but death entered into the world through the envy of the devil. When the liturgy says this to you and me, we should immediately be reminded of what God desires for us. If this was his original intention, then surely this continues to be his intention for us even today. The human being was never meant to suffer the things that he suffers even now. At the level of, again, illness, disease, fatigue, and all of those forms of corruption, those are all things that God never wanted us to experience. He would have rather that Adam and Eve choose a life of union, a life of us relying on God, a dependence on Him that He be the source of our life, of our knowledge, of all that is good and true. But instead, we turn to sin, and in so doing, we suffer things that He never wanted us to suffer. So when we speak about the human being being restored back to God's original intention, then He clearly wants us to live a life that is free of this form of corruption at the level of illness and disease. So he doesn't want to see children suffer from illnesses that they have nothing, they had nothing to do with, that they suffer unfortunately because of the consequences of the broken reality of the world that they were born into. He doesn't want to see us even suffer at the level of the sins that we inflict on ourselves. Because if we are asking the question, who is responsible for these different forms of illnesses and diseases, whether they be physical or at the level of the mind, we know that there are cases where the person had nothing to do with it, did not inflict any form of sinful action or behavior in their own lives. There was no sinful habit that brought on themselves this state of illness. And there are other people who unfortunately, because of their own decisions, because of them abusing their body and their mind, and because they introduce themselves into realities where they suffer the traumas of sin, then yes, they may be personally responsible for the sins that they suffer or for the illnesses that they carry within them. So we know that in some forms, it really is the corrupted human nature. When you see a child who is young and innocent and pure, and they are diagnosed with a cancer, that it breaks our heart to be able to see this level of suffering, to see this form of of a, of a pure child who did nothing wrong and yet they suffer. That is an expression or us witnessing what it looks like for the human being to suffer because of the corruption that entered into the world. And how it is that we as human beings abuse nature, we abuse each other, we allow ourselves to enter into realities that are, that are mostly governed by people's greedy desires for being able to, to gain more money and wealth at the expense of other human beings. And those children are born into that reality and we see them suffer because of it. Now that is not the same if, for instance, I decided that I was going to smoke for the next 30 years, I develop lung cancer, I can't turn around and say it's not my fault, I guess God just willed that I carry this cross. No, that's, that's not how that works. If I inflicted on myself habitual sins that I know that God never intended for me to do, and those sins have the consequences of destroying the temple of God, which is my body, then naturally I become responsible for that sin. So there are two different sources for who is responsible. It could very well be the, the, the accumulated reality of sin in the world because of corrupted human nature. And it can also be the personal passions chosen freely freely by the human being that inflict a form of illness on themselves.